I hate job hunting. Quick recap, as of November of 2022, I got laid off. Economy, what are you gonna do? But they continued to pay me until the end of December 2022. Passive income, baby. So since the beginning of the year, I've been job hunting and sharing the process with you. There was part one and part two, and this is part three. Most recently, I've interviewed with seven different companies in the last two parts of the series. But I wasn't too bothered by it because I was also interviewing with Apple. The first interview I did with Apple was on January 13th. It was a technical interview with a senior engineer and she asked me four questions. First, tell me about yourself. I told her and she had some follow-up questions about some projects on my resume. Second, can you give me as many ways as possible to reduce deflection of a cantilever beam? Third, walk me through the stress strain curve for steel and aluminum and how they would compare. Fourth, if you're tasked to design the packaging for the next MacBook, how would you go about defining the problem? What things would you consider? The interview ends and then three weeks later, they email me saying that the interview went well and they want to move forward. As part of their next steps, they asked me to complete a design challenge. In the design challenge, they say, let's say you have an Apple mug, a US power adapter, and a product manual. Design a packaging that will fit all these components. I had to submit 3D CAD as well as a PDF presentation of my final design. I was pretty excited about it, so I took all the packaging I had at home. That included iPhone packaging, MacBook packaging, iPad packaging, AirPods packaging, etc. I used them as inspiration for my mug packaging design because I wanted to make something that would look like Apple themselves made it. My goal was that if I was to give this packaging to you, you would believe that Apple actually made it themselves. So I looked for patterns between their different packages and similar in their design language. For example, I noticed in the top lid of a package, they would have like a locating feature to help keep the product itself in place. So I made sure to include that for my mug. Also, a lot of the bottom covers for these packages tend to be hollow and then they line it with this cardboard material liner to kind of give it some more stiffness. So I made sure to include that as well. I should also mention I watched a ton of unboxing videos on YouTube for Apple products that I didn't particularly own, like the Apple HomePod or the HomePod Mini. Those Apple products are the ones that resemble the Apple mug the most because they're like tall. All the other products like the iPad or the iPhone or the MacBook are pretty flat. And so with all the patterns I noticed within the Apple Apple packaging, I was able to create a CAD model on Fusion 360. Again, I made sure to stack the mug on top of the manual, which was on top of the power brick. But I don't want to submit the CAD model since the CAD model itself looks kind of ugly. So I rendered it to make it look more aesthetic like an Apple product. I'm not used to rendering on Fusion 360, so it took me a while to figure out how to do that. Anyways, once my design was complete, the goal was to have the customer lift up the packaging using Apple's satisfying suction design that would reveal the mug sitting in place. The mug would be 85% visible, so it's intuitive for the customer to know how to pick up the mug. Once they lift the mug, they'll see a 10 page product document with an easy to pull tab. Finally, underneath the document, they'll see the US power brick elegantly placed in the packaging. Anyways, I sent it over and was just waiting patiently to hear back for next steps. They're really slow when it comes to responding, but while I wait for them to respond, I was interviewing for another company. It was a small robotics company based in California. They basically make robotics for warehouse applications. The recruiter reached out to me and she then scheduled a call for me to interview with the hiring manager directly. It was a 45 minute interview and the interviewer starts off by first telling me about themselves and the company. He then asked me about myself, but he said something quite interesting in the interview. Listen to this. It looks like you got a lot of amazing internships, actually quite a lot actually, but really good breadth of uh, experience and, and very close to what we're looking for in an engineer. So. Before I even spoke to or talked about myself, he seemed already really interested in my past experience. He then goes off and asks me a list of questions that he had prepared from earlier on. First question he asked me was, what do you think is your best skill or trait? And what's the skill or trait you want to work on? Once he asked me that, I was like, this is going to be a relatively easy interview because that first question wasn't technical at all. Anyways, I said my strength was, I like to call it like my knack for CAD. I'm Katia, SolidWorks, Inventor. Basically just talking about my ability to CAD. For my weakness, I talked about definitely need some work on would be like FEA and SolidWorks simulation in the software to like create thermal models, that's something that I definitely need to work on. He even said, Okay, cool, great, great answer on that. Second question he asked me was a social skills question. So say, you know, you and another engineer have a technical disagreement about the way something should be done. So like you say M6, I say M3. How would you go about, uh, you know, working through that conflict and resolving that, that problem? 
pretty straightforward answer to this question. I mean, there really is only one way to answer it. You and the person you have a disagreement with literally just write a list of pros and cons for each of your solutions and then get some feedback from some of the other engineers on the team. Good answer. And then the third question he asked me was, what do you want your next job to offer you in terms of experiences? Like, what do you want to do in your next job? Long story short, I talked about my desire to build and design things that are useful to people. Fourth question he asked me was, Have you ever worked in a startup environment before? And the answer was obviously yes. But server is, server is very similar, so it's mm -hmm. good, to, good to know. Notice how here he said Serverbotics, which is the company I previously worked at, is very similar to them. Just remember that for later in the video. Anyways, the fifth question he asked me was, Do you have experience with 3D CAD, drawings, GD&T? Prototyping and design of experiments, design for sheet metal, design for CNC milling, uh, design for weldment, and design for injection molding and 3D printing. I think the answer on those is mostly yes, but any of those yeah. that you don't have? No, I have all those, yes. And then the sixth question he asked me was, What do you want to get out of your career, you know, as a whole? You know, long term. So I talked about my desire to have my own tech startup one day, and then he was like, Awesome. Same. The seventh question he asked me was, What in your opinion is the definition of a robot? My answer was that a robot is a collection of sensors, cameras, and mechanical components that work together to fulfill a function and are somehow influenced or controlled by humans. He then says, Love it. Good answer. And then the final question he asked me was, How can mechanical engineers use programming and software to increase our efficiency, our output, and the quality of our work? So I talked about how we can use automation to take care of some of the mind-numbing work we have to do as engineers. That was all the questions he had for me, and then he gave me some time at the end for about 15 minutes or so to ask him any questions that I have. The interview ended by him telling me he wants to move forward with next steps by sending me a design challenge to complete within a week. But I'm not gonna lie, sometimes going through all these hardware engineering interviews makes me kinda wish I had majored in computer science instead. For two reasons. First, they tend to have a higher demand. Second, all the projects you work on in CS don't really cost anything, whereas all the projects you work on for a hardware project, you know, you have to buy a circuit board, maybe wires, enclosures, a 3D printer, a laser cutter. Really, to make anything you touch, it costs money. Whereas for software, to make anything on a computer, it doesn't cost anything. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm very tempted to start teaching myself coding and just moving to the software world. But speaking of coding, if you're interested in it like I am, it's hard to learn something new without structure and a supportive community. That's where Practicum comes in who are sponsoring this part of the video. They have a career quiz that's free and a great starting point for someone who's interested in tech. It can help you figure out which branch within coding you should specialize in, like software engineering, data science, data analytics, or QA engineering. They'll determine all this information based on your interests. They have a high completion rate and flexible payment options. They can also help you learn a lot faster and not be bored. They also have live human code reviews, job search prep, and a cool externship program. Externship means you get to shadow a real engineer in the field and learn from them. And the best part is if you don't get hired within six months of completing their program, you can get a full refund. That being said for now, don't stress and give their career quiz a try. It's a few simple questions and then you're gonna get the result in your email. They also offer a free career consultation within the tech space if you're interested. Link is in the video description and if you choose to pay for any of their programs, you can use my code TAMER for 20% off. But their quiz is free. Anyways, moving on, back to the robotics startup, their design challenge was made up of two parts. First, they sent me this engineering drawing and asked me to recreate it and create a 3D model out of it. Second, they asked me to create a short slide tech presentation about my favorite sensor. I don't really have a favorite sensor, so I just picked a random one, but they wanted me to talk about it physically, electrically, and the mechanics behind how it works. Also, creating the 3D model wasn't bad either. The only issue was I was obviously more familiar with SOLIDWORKS, however, I didn't have access to it for two reasons. First, you can't just download SOLIDWORKS on your laptop. There's no download button on their website. You have to go through a third-party system like Hawkridge system and call them and email them to get SOLIDWORKS on your laptop. It's a little bit annoying to deal with them, but even if you manage to do that, the second problem is SOLIDWORKS will cost you like hundreds of dollars a month. I didn't know it was that expensive. 
Usually I get it for my actual job, so I never really have to worry about paying for it. Or if I got it through my student design team at university, again, I didn't really have to worry about paying for it. So I had to download Fusion 360 on my Mac and use that to create my 3D model. This was what the final design looked like, and it took me about a few hours to complete. I even had some of my friends look at it and give me their feedback and see if what I did make sense. It can be kind of hard to visualize a 3D object just based on 2D images, so that's why I asked them for some feedback. I also 3D printed it because I figured they might ask me questions about it in the interview if I were to move forward. So I figured it'd be nice to have like a, you know, something to hold and show. Now, in terms of the sensor presentation they asked me to make, this is what I created. I chose to talk about ultrasonic sensors. I gave a little overview, then explained how it works physically and electrically. I then went over the details of the sensor mechanics. There is a physics principle called the piezoelectric effect. So I made sure to explain that in my slide deck. Honestly, relatively easy presentation to make. Once I finished a design challenge for this robotic startup, I sent it out to them and they immediately responded back wanting to schedule the interview panel. I was also kind of surprised on how fast they responded. I didn't even know if they had enough time to even look through the design challenge. But whatever, I'm not complaining. They first wanted to do the interview panel in person, but they're located in California and I was in Toronto at the time. So I asked them, sure, I'd be happy to come in person if they're open to paying for my flight there. But they weren't able to, so we just decided to do the interview virtually. I don't know if whether I did it on-site or virtually would affect my chances of me getting an offer, but I don't know. Anyways, I sent the recruiter my availability and then she sent me back the interview schedule. It was two hours long with three different people, an electrical engineer, the CEO, and a fellow mechanical engineer. The first interview out of the three was with a guy called Abinan, who was the electrical engineer. He asked me six questions. First, you are, tell me about yourself and uh, your experiences. Second, so you also uh, working in hand with other engineers on sites, uh, or uh, were you leading a team, or were you alone? Third, were you involved in like uh, choosing any type of connectors based on the requirements or anything like that in your own? Fourth, what is your uh, take on uh, burning midnight oil? That question honestly kind of threw me off at first because I didn't know what he meant by burning midnight oil. But when I asked him about it, he said it basically means how comfortable are you working late into the night and I had an honest response here I said I don't mind doing that every once in a while you know to meet a specific deadline I did it all the time in university but if you have to do that every single day then that's an indication of poor time management skills and I still find it important to have somewhat of a work-life balance that toxic culture and tech of grinding 24 7 and working 12 16 hour days really isn't worth it moving on fifth he asked me, Talk to me about like a project where you work end to end and which you're proud of. Sixth. Do you uh, know any programming languages? Most of these questions really weren't too technical at all, just mainly behavioral questions. The second interview out of the three was with the CEO. He joined about 10 minutes late. Anyways, we talk about 30 minutes in the interview. He talks about himself, the company, what they do, and then he asks me questions about myself and kind of what I see in my future. He then ends off by asking me some specific questions about my resume, asking to know a little bit more about my projects. Thanks for your time. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Tamer. See you. Currently, 20 minutes after the time we're supposed to start, and the guy hasn't joined or started the meeting yet. Yeah, when I get impatient, I start complaining in Arabic. And yeah, he's already 30 minutes late at this point. But finally, 35 minutes after the scheduled start time, he joins the call. This was the third interview out of the three that was supposed to be in the interview panel, and this was done by a fellow mechanical engineer. So I was expecting him to ask me some technical questions, but my design challenge or the sensor presentation that I made. But nothing. Instead, he was just asking me a bunch of behavioral questions like this. Do you want to talk about maybe um, like either like the hardest problem or hardest project you solved kind of at serve or even before that? So I explained the project to answer his question while trying to be quite technical in my explanation since he also had a mechanical engineering background. All in all, I think the interview went pretty well. I was a bit surprised that no one even asked about the design challenge at all. I was also surprised that all the questions were behavioral and none were technical. Fast forward nine days later, I get this email. They rejected me, but the reason they rejected me honestly didn't make much sense to me. They said, and I quote, feedback was overall very positive but they decided to move forward with someone with more experience with a smaller company. I'm like, what? Do you even know who I am or what my experience have been? Was I just talking to myself in all the video interviews I did? With the exception of Tesla, every other company I worked for was a small startup. 
That's just the kind of work I like and the companies I enjoy working for. For some context, here are some of the companies I worked for and how big the company was. So Everbotics in their Northern California office was about 20 to 25 people on average. Blended was like 10 to 15. Validator was also 10 to 15. Helpware was really small, like five people. This is just to name a few companies I worked at. Their company they said was between nine to 15 people. So I think I have a decent amount of experience working with that size company. So here's what I think actually happened. They probably already had someone in mind they wanted to hire and I was just a backup option. So they just came up with that reason to just say something in the email. Oh well, that's life. But with that rejection and job out of the way, I was now patiently waiting to still hear back from Apple on the design challenge I made for them. These guys tend to be really slow when it comes to responding to people. Once I hear back from them, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, I wanna know, are you interested in seeing the raw, unfiltered, uncut footage of me doing these interviews? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out episode one of this job hunt series or check out episode two of this job hunt series. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.